Hey guys, uh, welcome to the tutorial uh, C Sharp calling an external DLL. Uh, this is an unmanaged DLL. If you're here to figure out how to add a DLL to your project, um, it's pretty easy. We just click over here. We go to add reference. All right, you'll go down to browse if it's not in your actual project, but if it is in your project, then it should be right here. You just click and hit OK. Uh, so you're welcome for the rest of you that are still here that want to use an external DLL the proper way uh, Not have it inside of your actual projects say you're building for a third party uh, Say you're trying to hide or manage the code differently um, For whatever reason you're building your DLL externally this video is for you I haven't found a lot of tutorials on this so kind of want to walk people through it Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're we're gonna get a form. You're gonna go to new project uh form okay and uh oh, okay <laughs> i guess we're not going to do it that way uh you'll just come down to wherever windows forms is which okay right here so form.net app whatever so yes make sure it's .NET framework don't do the core Okay, so we're going to pop that up and it looks like this. So we'll go to our toolbox. We can go ahead and grab our button. Throw a button on here. All right, so that's nice. We'll pull it out. We'll make it real big. Sweet. Button two. Button one had a uh, problem with the previous recording. Uh, so <laughs> we're not going to worry about button two. Right now we're done with this. So let's go ahead and hop over here to our external DLL. To get our DLL, we're going to go to new project. Uh, you're just going to go to class. All right. So once you type in class, this is on 2019, by the way, uh, Visual Studio. Um, we're going to have the .NET standard, which we're not using. And this is a universal. Uh, this is the .NET framework. This is the one we want. So click on this, and you'll hit Next. Uh, and then you name it, which will be your namespace. And then you have a class, which mine's just class 1, because whatever. Who cares? OK, so now we have a DLL. And it's right here. And we can do stuff like we could add properties to it. Um, you could do encapsulation, you could build this into many uh, namespaces and call those many namespaces. Uh, you can do anything you want. We can do CTOR, create a constructor, all right, which is cool, you know, whatever, just like anything else. Uh, but for this, we're just going to create a basic string method. So let's do public string, sorry, public static string i. And uh, we'll go ahead and <clears throat> give hi a return of hello. All right. Okay, so we made this static, and we're going to talk about that in a minute because we shouldn't have made this static. But what I'm going to show you guys is well, whenever you're debugging this, because it's unmanaged and external, you might wonder how do I debug it. It's pretty simple. You just click over here, you go to add new project. Uh, you can grab a console. And you want console app.net framework, right? Same thing. Let's just call it extern debug. Okay, we'll create. Okay. We already created, like I said, we had a we had a previous video where this didn't go so well. We didn't have any any video. OBS failed me. Or I felt OBS because I didn't deal with my graphics card. So uh, what we'll call it is extern debug one, whatever. You can name yours whatever you need to. Okay, so now right here we would just go to, again, this is for you people. If you have your DLL inside of the project, this is normally how you would go ahead and, and do it. You click over here, add reference. And project solution, you can find the other project. Uh, if you ne if you add them to each other, you create a circle dependency, and they don't like that very much. So make sure you're adding it to the correct one, uh, you know, the one that you need it in. So from here, we have access to that. So uh, we can go ahead and do using, and let's go ahead and call external debug DLL. Test. Okay. So now we can do console write line and we can call class one. We should be able to. And I 
dot high. Okay. So we called console one the, the high class. And we're going to go ahead and start without debugging your controller five. Some people don't use controller five. And we're going to error. And the reason why we're going to error is because our executable right now is set to our DLL, which is impossible because our main is inside of our external debug. So to fix that, we're going to right click, go to properties. Uh, we're going to go over here where it says startup stern. We're going to turn this to debug. Okay. So that's your debug, which has your main. You're going to hit apply and hit OK. We're going to start control F5. And we get hello, which is exactly what we expected. All right. So now we're going to go back and we're going to get rid of this static. And the reason why we're going to get rid of the static is because I know it doesn't make sense. It doesn't to me. I don't know why. If you do, comment below. Um, but whenever you use static, you can't call this method. And that goes against everything that I've ever known. But whenever you call this as an external DLL and you initiate the type and you initiate the instance, it can't be static. So let's go ahead and remove the static. And we just got hello. All right, so now we have an error. Object ref. Okay. So we have an right here is our error. So what we'll do is we'll just get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. Or you can just remove the code. But I'm just going to remove this altogether. All right, so now we'll go to build solution. Build succeeded. So if we right click, open a file explorer. Make sure you're under release. If you're under debug, then it will be under debug. But I'm under release. Um, we'll go under release. We'll go ahead and grab this. You don't need to grab that one, but I already have it, so who cares? Uh, so I'm going to come down, and I'm going to pop into this. Go ahead and create a folder on your desktop that says external DLL. I already have this here because, like I said, I screwed up a video, but you know we'll go ahead and add the new one. Place it. Cool. Uh, just add that real quick. And we're going to pop over to our form again. We're going to go ahead and double click in the enter. So we have button two. And button two, button one, button two, button two, click one. Yes, it's fun times. Uh, anyways, up here, we're going to go ahead and we need to do some things. Number one, we need to create an assembly. Um, we need to create a type. A type is going to allow us to get our entry point into our DLL. People that are familiar with C++ DLLs know that you have to have an entry point. Um, and then your, your methods and functions and stuff have to have an import export. We don't have to do all that. We just have to have the entry point. And then we're going to take that entire DLL and load it uh, into a instance. So we need a dynamic value to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and say private assembly is the first one we're going to need. And let's just call it DLL sim. sim. I don't know what's going on, guys. <laughs> type, we'll just call it DLL type. All right, and we're doing pretty good. And our last one's going to be private. We're going to call it dynamic value, and we'll just call it DLL instance. So this is where our instance is going to be loaded into. Now you can load this into your form load. Um, I'm just going to put it down here instead. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and call that DLL. So DLL assembly equals, and then we need to do assembly dot load from. Okay. And we need to enter the address of what we're loading. So there's ways to do this. Uh, you could go to your DLL, right? The wrong one. You could go to your DLL on your desktop. I don't need. Okay. You could go to your DLL on your desktop, and you can right-click, go to properties, the security. And you can copy this entire thing and put it in there. Uh, what I like to do instead is 
I like to create var root folder equals, and then we need an at sign. And I like to go back to our DOL. We don't want you. Go back to our DOL. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab this address. This is our root path. We'll go here. And then I like to do var file name equals. And then if we go back again, we can pull our file name, which is external DOL test copy. And then we can enter our file name. And then right here, what I do is path dot combine. And then I call the root folder and the file name. And what this does is it actually, Windows can be quite finicky whenever you're calling. Uh, probably sure Linux is worse even. Uh, whenever you're calling the thing about things such as permission or having a correctly formatted file path type, um, I will tell you this, this is probably, we probably need a backslash there. Uh, external deal. Okay, um, not sure about that. Anyways, so now we've called that and we have everything set up. So let's go ahead and move on to our type. And what we need to do is we have to DLL type, and we have to go ahead and say that we want to take the DLL assembly dot and we want to get type or you'd get types if you had multiple uh, if you had multiple uh, entry points you would get the types instead of just the type but we only have one so we will just get the type anyways um, so if we go right here we can see it takes three overloads we're gonna feed it two we need to go back here. Uh, we grab our namespace. All right. And then we have a class one. This is where we're entering it. So what we would do here is parentheses, namespace, and then dot whatever you named your class. So mine's class one. Okay. And then I set this to true. This just means that it ignores cases and all that stuff. And you know, if, if you mess up and do something stupid like lowercase or whatever that's fine it won't, it won't break anything all right so now we have the type and the last thing we need to do is create the instance so we will go ahead and what did we use dll instance we will equal to and now we need an activator dot create instance right and then we just feed it our dll type Boom. Okay, so it's a little more readable. <clears throat> we have our files right here. We're doing a path.combine. We're calling the root and the file name. Um, we're loading the type into the type assembly and we're getting the type, which is our namespace and our class where we want our entry point. And I set true because it doesn't matter, you know, if you have uppercase or lowercase, who cares? Uh, the DLL instance is brought in from the activator and we're creating an instance with the DLL type. So we're, you know, we're creating our entry point. We're loading the entire DLL basically into memory and we're going to rock from there. One of the first things you're going to notice is that you don't have intelligent intelligence uh, whenever you're doing this. So if we do, this is box dot show. Okay. And bam come back and we call our DLL instance uh, there's nothing okay doesn't doesn't matter what you do there's there's nothing there okay. so you need to know what you're calling from your unmanaged DLL in this case we're gonna call hi so okay we're gonna call hi whenever we press that button everything here looks good We'll go ahead and go to build. 
Debug, start with that D, control F5. And if we hit this, we hit hello, which is exactly what we wanted. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Um, I'm gonna go into further details about this, how to update an external managed DLL. Um, that's a big problem. A lot of people faced and I faced it. Uh, there's really two ways because an external DLL is, I will show you here. If we go to our project, we go to properties and we go down to our signing. Sign once, click once manifest right here. We can do this, but we can't actually sign, uh, create a self-updating program through uh, Visual Studio, okay? Because it's not actually a running application, you're just calling it. So you would actually have to call this to update itself. Uh, that's a problem because whenever you're calling it to update itself, it has to take the DLL out of memory to be able to replace itself. And that's an issue. There's multiple ways to address this. One of them is to create a service that actually goes and looks at a URL and decides is there an update or not. The other one, which is pretty cool, is to just build another DLL called Update DLL. And I'm going to go through manually creating a self-updater for a DLL uh, in the next tutorial. And we're going to talk about, you know, like, why would, you, why would we do this and stuff? And then we'll get into, you know, making a GUID and all sorts of stuff. Uh, just for security reasons, to make sure we don't have a man in the middle. Although I'm sure you're on SSL, you know, people can still spoof things. Uh, it's happened. So we'll get into all that next tutorial. I just want to thank you guys for watching this one, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and uh, if you didn't, please let me know what you would have done differently. Thanks.